vengeance and justice with one hand. This happened to my dad's great grand uncle, I will just call him uncle, nuclear revenge doesn't want acronyms. I never knew him, he died in 1998 when I was about five, my dad didn't know him very well either, he was kinda reclusive. Uncle was a holocaust survivor, but he never really talked about it, he never gave a testimony, never collected reparations, never went back to his homeland, Ukraine, never sought out if his friends or family survived. He just moved to the US, met up with the family he had there, and started over, got married, had kids, all the while never saying much other than I was there. The only reason we know any details about this is because one night one of his sons got him drunk, and he spilled the whole terrible story. Later the son found out that the mother knew a fair amount too, she had fled her native land, I think it was Czechoslovakia, just as it was being invaded, so she understood to an extent. But after that he refused to say anything more, the son has been spending the past few years trying to find out more from records and such, I don't know too many details unfortunately, I only met the son once, can't remember his name at all. Uncle was at a concentration camp, we're not sure which but I think the son said it was Dachau, but don't quote me on that. He was in his late twenties, not more than a day after he got off the train an officer pulled him aside from the working line and began berating him about being lazy. He then said he needed to be made an example of so the others wouldn't slack off, he took out a cutlass and chopped off uncle's left hand. The officer told him to get back to work and walked away laughing while uncle bled out in the snow. The others tried to nurse him and keep him as healthy as he could, but his wound still got infected and he was sick and slow a lot. Luckily, the others picked up his work, and helped him as much as they could. Apparently uncle had said that he had made peace with the fact that he was going to die there and be fed to the dogs. The officer continued to harass uncle, he looked for any excuse to beat and demean him, it's a wonder he didn't just shoot him. He took away his food, his shoes, had dogs attack him, made him do tasks that required two hands etc. When the camp was liberated uncle went up to a soldier and asked if they had captured any officers. He said they did, he asked if they caught the officer that had tormented him, which he said while he showed the soldier his stump wrapped in soiled bandages. The soldier brought the officer to him handcuffed and had him on his knees. Uncle then, with soldiers around him, proceeded to choke the life out of the officer with his remaining hand. Evidently it took quite a while, and apparently one of the soldiers offered uncle their gun, but he stuck with slowly but surely choking the life out of the man that took his hand and tormented him and countless others. Afterwards uncle got a wooden hand, moved to America, got married, had kids. All the while whenever someone saw his tattoo or asked him about the war or the camps, he just show them his wooden hand and say I was there, I don't want to go back I can't imagine the kind of PTSD he must have had from that experience, I can't imagine the pain and trauma it caused him. I doubt he ever got any real help either, it seems that he just took it all to the grave, but things like that shouldn't be forgotten, no matter how painful, they should be remembered so we as people never allow something like that to happen again. I hope he was at least at peace with himself and at least enjoyed the life he made after that ordeal.